Hello everyone, and this is Illustrator Expert Tips, Supercharge Your Creative Process. Um, it's really um, everything you need to know about Illustrator from a pro standpoint after using it for a very, 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 very long time. So shortcuts and workflows that you'll just, you should know after, uh, you know, working in, in Illustrator. Uh, we'll also dive into new features as well as sort of taking things to another level when it comes to design. I have it divided up into three categories. We have creation, so creating items from basic shapes to bursts, scaling, just pro tips. This is all pro tips, it's all, all pro tips. Uh, color and type, and then we'll get into complexity or just like how you can do, make it look like you spent a lot of time on something even though you didn't. And then we'll get into bonus content, which is like animation, video, audio, super fun. These are the assets, so just kind of like follow a theme. We're doing Art Alchemist, which is going to be super fun. And we're going to start out in Illustrator, of course, setting it up. So here I am in Illustrator. Uh, big thing to watch out for, and usually let's just reset this. This is what your toolbar looks like. You have this little flyout menu right here um, that you can actually used to kind of customize your toolbar. So I can take this, I hate clicking on the perspective grid tool because I often accidentally click on that and I'm like, oh, this stupid thing comes up every single time. It's like so annoying. I don't know how to get rid of it. Do command H, it doesn't go away, All right? Well, we can get rid of it, not by hiding grid. Yeah, we'll do that, we'll hide grid. Uh, but more importantly, we can use this flout menu and then just pull that off, get it out of there. That's all I'm doing and customize this any way we want. It's not gone forever. In fact, on that note, let's say for instance, you wanna find something in Illustrator. Well, right over here, uh, upper le uh, right hand corner, this discover, it's the discover panel, click on that and you can search for perspective tool. You know, perspective grid tool. Where is it? Look, this is what this discover panel does. It highlights the tool or tutorials based on it. So I clicked there and now it's added right down here and has it selected. And I'm back to the first problem I had. So let's go back in there and hide that. Turn that off, it'll go away. You get the idea. All right, so that's setting up your toolbar. That's your discover panel, which is gonna be your resource for anything that I mentioned that um, you need to recall later on. Now, what I'd like to do is show you what is brand new is this contextual task bar. So this usually pops up depending on what you have selected, it'll bring up this contextual task bar. Really helpful personally for uh, fonts. I find it super helpful. Notice how you can move this bar around so you could really start to customize it because usually for fonts, the list is so long, I like kind of having it off to the side and uh, we can roll through this. Looks like I have two copies of that. Oh yeah, I made these earlier. That's okay. We'll undo that a couple times. And uh, these are actually shapes that I was working with earlier. But notice how I noticed that all because the contextual taskbar will serve up the options that you need for what you have selected. So there's that. All right. Oftentimes I will hide it. In fact, yeah, that's typically what I have going on is I will hide that bar. Um, hide bar, cool. All right, so we have that. Now, um, I can kind of talk about like setting up all these panels. You have yours set up a certain way. That's totally cool. I wanna go beyond shortcuts um, in the toolbar since I've already covered that. And I wanted to talk about setting up your actual file. Because oftentimes when you go to file new and you select any one of these, right, we'll go to letter, like, okay, here I am, you know, and you'll start creating. First off, I drew out this white box. I can't really tell what the color is unless I zoom in. And then I'm like, oh, it's a one point black stroke. Oh, hate it, right? I want something thicker, something that I can work with. So that's why I like to set up Illustrator to work for me, um, not only with uh, shapes, but also with fonts. So what is my default font? What is gonna be my default uh, fill and, uh, and stroke? So I'm just gonna change this really fast, boom. Like if these are the really what I end up using a lot, say a, um, you know, a five point stroke with no fill, 
yeah, that's what I want to be the default. And you could save your defaults over here in your graphic styles. So take this, hold down the option key, and overwrite that. Bingo. Now, anytime you create anything, so we'll go with a star, it's gonna give me that same stroke size, right? Or whatever you've customized. Same thing for the font, right? Character styles. We want to change this as well. Let's double click on oh, let's double click on it. Right in here, this is where I would change it to that font that you want. So we'll change it to say Natura 72 point. That's gonna not be my default font. Let's go with something else. <laughs> You're definitely gonna notice. But this will be the default character style, the default graphic style. Now that only works for this one document when you're creating things, which doesn't do us a lot of good going forward, right? Just doesn't. Well, let's fix that. Because what you can do with this file, I'll save this file as a customization. So we'll call it custom, we'll put it on our desktop, we'll click OK. Not only that, I would typically add a bunch of swatches, a bunch of brushes, a bunch of stuff in there. And then once you have that created, just like I have, in fact, let me open this up, you end up with a file like this. So this has all my colors because I was so tired of creating all these gradients every single time. It was such a pain, right? I want default graphic styles as well as additional graphical styles. And then same thing for brushes. Yeah, give me all the brushes that I use a lot and uh, really put everything in one file. And yeah, name it everything. Now, where does this file go? It goes right here in your application support Adobe Illustrator new document profiles. Let's go there. Right here, same spot. Here's that everything file. So this is what I create. Notice that you can also modify any one of these profiles. So even for this basic mobile one, anytime you create a mobile a, a line or whatever, any customization you do to this file, this is gonna be red. We'll do that just for fun. Like so. Drop that right there. Anytime I select mobile, file new. Mobile, we'll go with, sure, iPhone X. Oh look, look at you fancy pants you are always gonna be that red. Now, that's also where I put my everything file. So if you get a file new, go into print. I don't know why it's here, but under print, here's everything. So here are your files. You can customize these default profiles and you can make your own. I encourage you to make your own, because now what does that mean? Double click, wait for it, it will open up. Oh, look at all these toys. So many toys. So much room for activities. Look at that. So we could jump in, sort of have all these gradients, have all these um, uh, brushes as well to sort of make whatever we want. So it just helps you get, a, get up to speed faster. File, new, and then select your particular file that you have created. Okay, huge tip. All righty, we have that done. Let's go back to our creation file. Uh, we have our files set up sort of going forward. Now let's get into uh, creation, actually creating of content. And this is what we're gonna make. We're gonna make this. We're gonna break this down and uh, start simply. So right in here, first thing we'll do, we'll jump in, um, you know, and. For most of these tools, as you click and drag, up and down arrows will control the angles. So there I could have it sort of this size. And you know what? Let's jump in here and give it a, a stroke and a fill that we like, like that. So just use my arrow keys to limit the sides of the polygon. Let's put it on this layer, we'll lock that down. Let's just say for this prism, I wanna do like a star burst at the top. So we could take the star, we have a flare that we can use, but we'll take that star, we'll click and drag. So this is our default star, right? Pretty straightforward. Arrow keys, we'll add more. Hold down the command key 
and it will enable you to make the spires even larger so we could expand that out like so right so we could have that sort of burst if we want to uh, just to make something cool there's other ways of doing this um, you know I've seen and I, I would sometimes show this if you have a uh, circle with a dashed line so let's go into the properties panel dashed line and then we'll just increase the size of this a lot right we could really crank that up in fact you know what let's just jump up to 100 there we are um, let's go as high as 200 but this is another way to make a burst and you still have control over uh, all the gaps and spacing and everything Right, so we could do that. I'll do even one better than that because I wasn't crazy about that shape. Well, let's go back to our um, polygon, which is, whoop. Let's, let's fix this. I'll talk about this appearance panel in a second. Whoop. New art has basic appearance. Uh, it's because I'm not making it very big. Let's get rid of that. Drawing this out. It just had too many. There we go. Okay, so uh, too much is going on here. <laughs> it's the stroke. That's what it was. Uh, that's what was happening. So we'll get rid of that dash line. But we'll go back here. So um, I actually want to create um, a polygon. And we'll flip this. Create a cool burst, like so. Let's flip this, put this right here, and make this larger. So for this one, in fact, if we turn on our contextual taskbar, right in here, edit path, this little button, we can make this a radial repeat. So now we can do a radial repeat on this. It'll go up to, should go up to 100. But now I can kind of control sort of those bursts, um, how far away they are. We can shrink that down like so and position it right there, um, all using that radial repeat. If we edit this, you know, we're going to be able to, um, you know, edit that accordingly and it will change all of them. All right, so we have that. Let's hide this again. Last one. So we've done bursts three ways. This is our fourth way. In fact, I think this is the most fun. I'm going to um, maybe take the line segment tool. Seems innocent enough, right? Grabbing this line. Let's give ourselves some room. And I'm going to drag out. It just creates this one line. Not a lot going on there. That's fine. But what I want to do now is hold down the tilde key, the little squiggly line. And then it just like makes that duplicate of that line to give us just a cool prism burst, which is really what I was going for right here. Cool. What happened? Hey, it made all those lines. That's a lot of lines. But also we have something pretty cool here. All right, we have that done. We have stars, we have bursts. Now let's create our all-seeing eye in the center. All-seeing eye right here. In fact, let's just jump out to just another uh, another canvas. We'll move this snake off. We don't need that snake yet, but we will in a second. Let's move that off because I want to actually create and start modifying a line. Now, I'll still just go back in, use uh, this graphic style. Here's our circle. For a typical circle, you'll get these control points, which are also kind of fun to work with. But if you ever have an issue with this, because so if, if, if you have a problem with this being a shape, you could expand the shape. A lot of people don't know it, but basically you could expand that shape because the problem is, yeah, if you expand that shape, it's basically going to get rid of that, uh, that control point. But what I want to do here 
the switch to my anchor point tool. We're just gonna clip, clip, there we are. And uh, I'm gonna show you, typically what people do is like, if you want both sides to be equal, you'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, holding on the shift key. So I've just moved that in 70 pixels, right? So people will do that. Heck, I do it all the time. You don't need to do that, right? Let's actually redo. And uh, I want to actually select the scale tool. So for the scale tool, we're going to select both points. A lot of people think the scale tool is used on a whole object, but I'm going to use the scale tool on these two points. And look, I can scale from the center and make this eye blink, right? But I have that level of control to do some fun stuff with the scale tool. So think about using the scale tool, the skew, the rotate on points rather than just on whole objects. So this allows me to just create a perfectly balanced eye. I'm totally into it. All right. Now, let's get into this next deal, this pro tip. Um, what if I wanted to put an eye on the inside? So here's my eye. You know, I want it to be blue. Here it is. I'm going to put it in there, but this, this eye needs to be larger um, than the um, out of the uh, outside of the eye. So oftentimes you might select both of these, and actually you need this to be underneath, and you do a clipping mask. That's a lot of work, right? And then you got to move it over. Okay, that's kind of what I want. Too much work. Don't do that. Literally select your object and right over here, really small. If you could see that, we want to do a draw inside. And this is really old school, actually. Uh, we'll switch to our tool. We'll draw out from the center and we're going to be drawing on the inside. There it is. And it still has that stroke on the outside. Uh, love that I have that flexibility to kind of shrink that down and position accordingly, kind of like that. Right, so that's what's going on there. I can click outside of that to get out of that mode, um, uh, but I'd say that looks looking pretty good. Let's grab and let's add the pupil right in here. No, something kind of like, kind of like that. And we'll do a highlight really fast. This is for our eye. Highlight over those two colors. Let's just change the blend mode. Real fast overlay. There we are. There's our eye, fancy. All right, so draw inside a squared away. Use that. You don't have to use clipping masks. Believe me, it's too much work. Uh, next up, let's do the eyelashes. So we have the line tool. We draw out a line. Uh, nothing too fancy here. Let's make this a little larger. For this line, we can change the uniformity of it so we can adjust the width profile so it will be like that point. Now, I just created this. This is a huge problem. Such a pain in the butt. Uh, dare I say, but I'm going to create these lashes and we'll just make straight lashes. But, um, you know, once I create this, like I actually want to draw one out here now. So I'll use the line tool I'll draw out. Oh, really? I got to change that back to 10 and then do that every single time. So I, I've seen people draw out and they'll hit the eye for eyedropper and click. That's kind of a pro tip. Maybe I'll do you one better because right over here, under the appearance panel, new art, you know what, don't have a basic appearance. We don't do, want to do anything basic, right? Have this appearance. So when I use the line, draw out, okay, 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 okay. Every single time I draw, it's gonna use that appearance. Even if I want to use the pencil tool, it's gonna have that same curve, right? So I just topped a pro tip with another pro trip. The, the eyedropper was a pro tip. The, how we topped that was turning off, don't be basic, right? Well, we're gonna do one more, in fact. Let's check this out. I wouldn't even do that. This is what I would do in this case. I would take this and I'd turn it into a brush. Anytime you need to sort of duplicate something over the course of an arc or really any, any case, uh, we take this and make it a pattern brush and we'll click OK. All right, so it's going to duplicate this a bunch of times. I know you can't see it. That's OK. We'll see it here in a second. We'll space this out maybe 
five percent and uh, I went ahead and made this one so let's just see how this looks there it is so typically you don't really know what it's gonna look like till you start drawing but here is what was once one line is are all these lines I'll draw out I'll double click on it and then you can start to control the um, the spacing There we go, seems to be working now. There we go, 200%, you gotta really crank that up. Uh, but that's okay, that's what I want. So we now actually are able to control that across one line, apply to strokes. It's gonna be super easy to work with now, right? We'll use the pen tool, we'll click, drag that out, we'll click again, and we'll make sure it's set to that, that eyelash like so, and we can adjust accordingly. Right, so that's what I do. What if we want it thinner on this side? Do we have to create outlines and do all that? No, we just go right up here. The uniformity, think of it as one line, one thickness. Click, oh, look at you. Tuck you in right there, tuck you in right there. It's all based off that one line. And there we have it, send it back. We have our eye that's slowly winking at you. Right, so use brushes. I guess it's looking a little crazy, and that's okay. Um, uh, let's make another brush. Now, I wanna point this out. This is just freaking awesome. Now, let's actually delete that, because look at all these brushes. Anytime you create a brush, did you know, like I didn't know this for the longest time, you can drag it and drop it out here. And what you get are the different parts. Look at this, let's just ungroup it. It's a brush I already made. Let's delete this. We can sort of create this from scratch, but this is the only component that's repeated. So we'll drop that in there. Pattern brush, click OK, Brrr, doing its thing. Auto-centered, right? And I don't worry about the head or tail here. What I do is I'll take this tail, drop it right in here, hold down the option key, pop, and it will put it where it's supposed to be, right? Same thing for the head, option key, pop. There we go, puts it right there, and, uh, and we're good. And we were able to create that brush. Let's hit N, draw that out. We have our, ooh, our cool snake brush. There's our snake brush. I have lots of snake brushes. I have this, uh, um, tentacle brush, which is kind of cool. Change that, right? In case we wanted to have tentacles for eyelashes. I don't know. Make it weird. But super cool. Pretty easy to work with. I make brushes like all the time, if you can't tell. Um, and I save them. So they're all right here ready for me to use, which is great. Okay. So I've talked about creating brushes, how it makes things efficient. Um, let's get into um, intertwine. So let's turn this on. So we've created our eye. We uh, have this triangle, we made the triangle earlier, and now we have this snake brush. Now for this snake brush, I actually want it to weave in and out like around this um, triangle. So select both of them rather than using clipping masks. Clipping masks are almost the old way of doing things. Go to uh, intertwine and select make. We introduced this last year. This is really awesome. So right here, I want this to maybe be in front here, but then behind right here. So you just circle it and it pushes it behind. Make this in front. Maybe it's behind up here at the top. I encourage you to do big circles, big loops. Um, it's just going to be easier. That's what I want to do. And now look how it's made that. You can always jump back in here into intertwine, edit, right? For these parts, if I want this to be in front, click, click. I'm actually toggling that in front and then behind. See like this, in front, behind, right? But it gives you that flexibility and also this is fully editable. This is where I draw those big circles so it doesn't accidentally get cut off. But this is looking much cooler. And is this still so easy to work with thanks to Intertwine? 
Now let's get into new features, uh, specifically text to vector. All right, so here I am, properties panel. This is text to vector graphic beta. Uh, you have the type, um, and then you typically have the prompt, and then you will have some styles right in here. So you're, you'll have some sample prompts right in here. I've already ran this uh, once before, so that's why this looks different. But if I want an evergreen tree uh, with scare, scary branches, um, and we want this to be flat style, and I'll even say graphic style, graphic, flat graphic style. All right. I'm not really putting down colors or anything like that. I can, um, but mainly you can kind of define the style. Thing is, just add some commas in between your phrases. Start out with a subject. Be as descriptive as you want. And um, there are some other things you could do to get it to match match your style, which I'll get into in a second. And keep in mind, this is set to subject. All right. I said scary branches. Is this really scary branches? Uh, maybe. I mean, it's not bad. That's, I mean, it's looking pretty good. But this is all vector. Command Y. There we are. I really like this tree. So notice that as vector, we can jump in and sort of select. Uh, it's really grouped. If we actually twirl down, you could see sort of all of the elements. But probably what I would do here is select this and then do a select same fill color right, to grab all those. That's, it, it does a cutout approach, but that's just where this is at today. Um, we're actively working on this, which is why this is in beta. Uh, and I'm really excited about where this is headed. Uh, it's going to be really awesome. All right. But there's our tree. We can do our editing, get rid of those parts if we want to, uh, kind of like that. You get the idea. We can generate even more of these as well, because honestly, this is not the style that I'm going for. Um, and I like to change that. And there's ways of changing it, right? I haven't gotten into recolor, but I can talk about recoloring. What I would do is I would actually have my graphics. So I've already made this, right? There's this, there's also the, uh, the snake. So if I add the snake in here, I could have a couple things on my uh, artboard. There we go, shown my artboard. Uh, let's make sure we draw out the snake. So right down here, we could also have the snake on my artboard. So we have our colors and then just the style. It's kind of like an outline style. I really still want that flat graphic style. Um, but right in here, we're going to do something similar. We're going to turn on match active artboard style. It was already on, but nothing was on there. So just to show you the contrast, we're going to leave everything as is. And all we have are additional graphics on my artboard. It should actually match the graphics and the color. So this will be interesting. All right, there we are. Here's our tree and we can kind of compare it to our graphics. Uh, we are kind of getting that triangle shape, right? We're getting that. We'll take a look at some of these others. This is really cool. This is, this is more along the lines of where, where I'm headed with this content. And uh, from here, let's just select the same fill color, delete it, and there we have, we have our tree, right? From there, I would probably shift the colors. I do want to point out recolor artwork if we jump in here. There's the color theme picker. So if it's not perfect for selecting those colors, we could use color theme picker and just kind of drag over those elements or drag over this and uh, get an even cooler look, which I kind of like how artsy and crazy this is. Um, yeah, so really you can kind of go nuts. Notice how it saves the uh, versions in here. So there's variations and it will save all of them. So uh, now that I've created this tree, I've kind of shrink that down. We can put that over here. Uh, maybe I want to actually turn that off, put that, put that right here and just turn that off for now because I want to create the background. Now for the background, really for anything, you could draw out um, sort of a rectangle that will be the size uh, that you want to go with. So here's my rectangle. Um, so this is the size I want the scene to be. So I'm going to change this to scene. We'll go to scene and right in here, we'll type in, you know, forest. Let's do scary sunset forest for sunset forest with trees and a river and mountains. Uh, you know, again, we could say scary 
and flat graphic style. Hit generate. You can see it. I've already done it a couple times. We can see it run through here and generate what we typed in that prompt. There we go. So we do get those sunset colors, but I really like how they're roughly the same tone. Uh, so it, so it kind of works. Definitely very flat. Uh, scary kind of gives me, I don't know, are those bats? So it does its best job to figure it out. I personally like this really simple one right here. Seems to go with my design. Um, so let's just make this a little bit larger. Lock it down and uh, use it as, as part of our design. A command Y, we could see pretty clean vectors. The only issue is, is it does cut them out and it doesn't layer them. Um, but from there, you know, I could take this and start designing and uh, creating content. Now to keep in mind that uh, this does use um, Adobe Firefly. So this is like actively getting better. Okay, so we'll go to icon really fast. And right in here, we wanna have a witch. We want a witch icon. All right, so we'll hit generate. So the other one is, so there's icon that I'm running now, but also there is um, also a uh, pattern. We'll create a pattern. Don't really get into that. Like I don't need to, um, it does exactly what you think. So there's our, there's our little witch. That's, I was not descriptive. So that's about as, uh, as close as we get, but I like, I like all these little, oh, I like this one a lot. So here's our, here's our witch that we can kind of place wherever as an icon, dropping that right down there. I also want to point out off to the side right here, if we open this up, you can add, increase, or decrease the level of detail that you want with what you create. All right. So that is that. Um, and then also right in here for these variations, just consider these being, and you can say I generated some other items. You can consider this to be like little um, illustrator files that are within your illustrator file. So it does keep those in there. Just kind of be mindful, I guess, of file size, but that's why they're stored. So you don't really need to worry about like losing this, this witch. For instance, if I remove it, you know, she's still here. I could always bring her back in. And also if we take a look right over here, as I roll over it, it'll say which this is rose flat graphic, you know, and you get the different prompts for everything, what everything was, was uh, created to use. And then also if you like the results, feel free to upload or upvote or downvote those uh, and get us, give us your feedback. Cause that's uh, that's how we make the world go around. That is text to vector. I think it's pretty impressive. There's a lot you can do with it. And I've just seen it like get more and more advanced um, the, the more we've been, uh, working with it and, uh, you could just do some awesome stuff. Let me just open up this file really fast right in here. I think it was cool doing like spaceship based on this color scheme right here. I did an isometric, uh, design. So let's change this to subject. I was using subject a lot. And also one more thing, we can open up this text to vector graphic beta panel. So as I open this up, oh, so much easier to see everything. I really like that it was kind of creating these houses. And uh, if we take a look, 3D isometric house flat style, uh, which is pretty cool. So uh, anyways, that's just an example of what you can make. Use this text to graphic panel, beta panel. It's just easier to see all this content rather than this small window uh, as well. So let's click over to our final version. So this is what we've created. This tree was created based on the prompt, right? This is my tree that was created based on a prompt uh, using text to vector. The background was created with a prompt as well. And then we have um, all of our assets, but this is everything we've gone through. So we've done quite a bit in the short amount of time. Uh, and that kind of sums up creation, not only setup, but creating with uh, pro tips in Illustrator. But there's more, that was just creation because we need to get into type and color. Huge part of what we do, right? I'll get into a new feature, which is the retype beta feature. 
uh, get into fixing scripts, strokes. It's a whole thing, generative recolor, colorizing and randomness. So let's start right in here. Retype. So this is a case where, oh, I found these cool uh, images and I really wanna know what that font is or at least get something close to it, especially this Stardust one. So let me introduce retype. So we'll go right in here. We have the retype beta. We'll open this up. We'll put this panel off to the side right here. And with this selected, we can click enter. Keep in mind, this is a JPEG, but it could just as easily be uh, a vector asset, but it will go ahead and process that. That's using, you know, again, Adobe Firefly technology to analyze the image and uh, hopefully give us some options for however many uh, fonts are there. There we are, let's enter retype. And here we are, look, it actually picks up um, multiple fonts right in here. This font, this one, and even their signature. So for Stardust, I'm actually just kinda kinda scroll down and see what we have. Um, yeah, they're catching up, catching that curly S, but it does give me some options to work with. Um, Let's actually jump in here. Let's actually go with this one. I like this P22. I can favorite it. And then we can exit out of retype. And right down here, I can select this text. But that's how that works. Now let's take a look at this. So this is, uh, you know, this is pretend like we fast forward uh, a year. We now have this in outline mode. So we've outlined the font. What the heck, what font is this? Do we know? Let's try this, we're gonna hit enter. I honestly don't remember what font it is. And can we say this is an ugly gradient? Oh, there we are, it's dispense. That's probably it, if you notice the H there. So, uh, I made it look ugly and crazy just to kind of really push its limits. But as we click, we can go ahead and apply it and that is retype, uh, which is really impressive. Honestly, I just think it's so impressive and this will probably be the most used thing because what does this mean? It doesn't, means you don't have to have all these copies of the font as a backup as you start outlining your text because I know you're gonna. All right, so that's the retype feature. Let's jump ahead. We have this appearance panel. So this is a case where, you know, I have this font and this is, this is really an issue where these cursive letters are overlapping. I see too many people want to outline it and make it a solid object and all that. That's fine. If you want to do that, you're just kind of making life hard on yourself. When you could actually add in the appearance panel, you can add a fill over the top. With this fill selected, we could change that to white and now it's gone. So before and then after, before and then after. This gets to be really fun because we can add additional, say like an additional stroke. Let's add uh, blue here. Um, and uh, I'll increase the size of it, but look what's happening. The blue's now on top, and this just deals with stacking order. So always make sure your fill is on top. And now we can have two strokes. So I can have this be like 10 point, and then I can duplicate this. Again, and the second one will be 20 point, and it will be a different color, right? So you could really have a lot of fun with this. Do this once more, wait for it. Let's give this 30 point, make it yellow. You can see what's going on here, right? Making it really vibrant. But also what's cool is you can have effects in here as well. So we could say, hey, you know what? I kind of want to create um, uh, even more of a bevel around it. Let's do this. Let's do offset path, right? So I've gone into offset path because we really want to make this thick. Um, we'll make this 20 point and look what we've done. We have this off pa offset path being applied to that text, uh, which is actually an effect being applied to that stroke. All right, I'll do you one more, maybe. Let's get rid of that. Let's do this. Let's go in here, let's go to uh, transform, t -t 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 transform, um, transform, we will actually make copies. Let's make 20 copies and we will offset this a uh, certain angle. Um, we're not going to scale it, but we do want to move it. Let's move it five pixels, five pixels and make 20 copies or 50 copies. 
And so we're moving it horizontal and vertically. We'll click OK. And oh, you know what? I don't think I've applied it. Let's get rid of this. Let's go back in here. Transform. Preview. I just have that text selected, but that's OK. We'll offset this five pixels. Um, give this 40 copies. And now we can see, oh yeah, look at that kind of bursting out like so. Oh, we need to apply this same to this text. Hit I, boom, there we are, put that on top. Now we have just that cool long shadow look. You know, really pretty easy to do. Um, actually, and we could always change this. So let's throw a little gradient in there just for fun. There we go. Yeah, you get the idea. I just made it look worse. Let's change it back. But use your appearance panel. It is phenomenal. So if you even want to make a bunch of different versions, because we are experimenting with the logo or the title art, we can go into graphic styles. Even for this one, we've just made it. Let's save it, our long shadow version. But all these other versions that uh, I either made or found somewhere, we can go through and see what all those look like. And in fact, if we move these graphic styles over, we could see what it's the different, uh, they're probably all using elements of the appearance panel. So look at this, a lot of inner glows for this one, right? Inner glows on a fill. That's what's giving it that nice bevel look. Um, here's what I made that I like. This one has multicolor drop shadows. Um, excuse me, multiple fills with drop shadows that just give it a nice depth. Uh, the one thing that's missing is the stroke actually needs to be beneath like that. So let's just drag that down because that's my fault. Why does it even have a stroke there? Let's get rid of it. There we go. Same thing for this one. Get rid of that one. Cool. Different versions, so much fun that you could, you, if, you're using the, if you're not using the appearance panel, well, let's just say uh, you should. Let's click over, here's the final. Ooh, this is interesting, right? What's happening here? Well, let's take a look. Uh, let's go back to this previous one, because I want to show this. Pasting this. This is just a little, uh, a little star. We learned how to make a star earlier. Let's go into brushes. I kind of don't really have a lot of time to show this, but if I drop this in here, this could be a scatter brush. Right, and we could scatter that around. I already made this brush, but the cool thing is we can take this and for the stroke, we're gonna change that to a white and we're gonna use this brush. So we're gonna click right here and apply that scatter brush. Oh, look at all those sparkles. We just created sparkles. So your before and then your after with sparkles because we're using a scatter brush as a stroke on that text. Oh, pretty neat. All right, let's get into color. So that's all I have for fonts. I, I wish I had more time. Let's get into color now. Honestly, I think this color is looking pretty good, but let's try a couple different versions of this and we could take a look at all my artboards. Here's all my artboards. And uh, let's just kind of make three different versions. So first off for this one, we could recolor this. That is the plan. There's a lot going on here. But this is a new feature, generative recolor. So this is where you type in a phrase because we want this to look a little spooky. So spooky uh, midnight blues. Um, we'll even type in, uh, I don't know, scary. Um, horror, but you know, we're not even gonna put blues in there because I just want it to, I wanna give it some abstract statements and uh, see what it does with it. All right, ooh, spooky midnight scary horror. Ooh, that's freaking awesome. That one looks like not that good. That one's not horror. Uh, but I really like this one. 
I like, I think this one's going the right direction. Now we'll go into advanced options and then really start to tweak these colors because notice how it's all over here. Well, I, I might, I could basically tweak from there. If I do want to, you know, dip it more into the blue or the sort of the purple realm, uh, I can do that and I can start to break off those colors. Uh, also, we could reassign this. So I could reassign this to like eight colors, right? And there's the eight colors. Made it look a little bit too pretty. Let's jump in there. Grabbing the center one, let's make it all darker. But I'm just kind of tweaking this accordingly based on that prompt um, and then just kind of using my own design intuition to uh, tweak it some more. But that is recolor beta in the all new Illustrator. All right, now let's get into complexity. At least that's what I'm calling it. It's kind of hard to determine like how can you make something, uh, you know, that you would typically, these are like more shortcuts. You wanna add complexity without things being too difficult. So I'm gonna talk about scripts, global edit, mock-up, 3D and materials. So let's go right in here. I really like this, Fillinger. We'll select all of these elements because I wanna put all these elements in the heart. That would take so much time and think about, well, something's gonna take a lot of time. Can I automate it using actions or is there a script out there? And there is, it's called Fillinger, which I like, cause like fill it with stuff. So minimum distance resize value, the precise and percentage of the total size. So the max is gonna be four, minimum is gonna be one. We're gonna click okay and it's gonna take all those elements and put them in that heart. How do I know it's gonna go in the heart? because that should be the topmost graphic. There it is. Actually, let's twirl that down. We've got a lot going in there, on in there now, but look at that. There's the, all of those assets. Look at that. All that stuff filled in there. We have a little bit of a problem because there's this like, this, what is it? Oh, that's a, uh, oh, I think that was supposed to be the butterfly. Doesn't look good right? Because it had a stroke on it. My stroke is not scaling. It needs to be edited. So check this out. Do I have to go in and select all of them? Well, you could if you want to waste time. Or what you could do is go right over here to start global edit. This will recognize this shape for anything, right? Whatever you have selected, start global edit. Look at how it highlights everything. Everything's highlighted. Now all I need to do is just get rid of that stroke. Bingo, bango. There's our butterfly. I'm not crazy about the butterfly. I probably need some work. But how easy is that? Fillinger and then global edit. Makes it so nice to uh, create this, ultimately this collage. And everything is still editable. Can remove that. There's our nice heart, uh, which looks really good. All right, we've done global edit. Here's our final. It's looking pretty good there. Um, let's take a look at some more things. And actually, let's get rid of that. You do not need to see that. Uh, just some other fun scripts that I like. Uh, jumping in here, we want to do triangulation scripts. Triangulator Brrr. made, um, you know, sort of triangulated all of these shapes. And these are individual shapes now. So I could take that, and this is also fun, another fun script. I use this all the t a lot, more than I'm willing to admit. What if I want all these rectangles, all these shapes to be these colors? These have been my colors all along. We'll go into scripts, and we'll do random swatches fill. Based on my swatches that I have selected, brrr, random swatches fill. So again, just using scripts to make my life easier here. Um, right in here, a case where I want to have all these stars. Oops, sorry about that. I have all these uh, stars for all these different constellations. And uh, I want to put uh, this star at every point where these lines intersect. So typically it means taking this, duplicating it, moving that over there, right? And I have to do this for all of these? That's going to take too much time. Or will it? Better not, Paul. So take this, 
And uh, this is the topmost graphic. I'll select all these elements and we will go into scripts, duplicated at, at selected anchors. So all those anchor points, there's the bling. In fact, you know what? Let's select all this stuff. Maybe I'll actually undo that because I could do it for everything. Let's select all of these. Duplicate it, select an anchors. Wait for it. Fill the night sky with stars. Hey, yo, look at that. A lot of stars. The problem is, is I had uh, this text selected, so, but it certainly made it look cool. All right, now let's get into mock-up. Uh, here's the situation. I actually made this shirt, but this is a... Uh, Let's uh let's take this and release it. Get rid of that. But I want to put this skull on this shirt. So rather than bending it and doing all that warping, just select both. You'll go to uh, to window and we will go to mockup. Mockup beta. Push that over there. Now select, I wanna select this element and that image and click mockup. So I don't need to use any of these. I'm using this specific image. This also uses Firefly, basically analyzing that image, understanding the depth of it all and generating a mesh. There we are. So look, oh, put it, put it on his shoulder. Let's bring it in. Oh, look at that. There we have that. Uh, shrinking it into place, holding down the shift key, and there's our design for our shirt. Pretty amazing. So right up here, notice how we can edit that symbol so back in here, take this, edit this symbol any way we want, and then it's gonna be fine once we jump back out. Uh, it, will, uh, it will be fine there. And that is mock-up. Lastly, 3D. We could take the same element, or even this one. We've got some things going on here. Let's actually ungroup this. Uh, Let's uh, take this little face, let's move this out. Uh, and actually what I made is I made a pin. So we have some pins in my bag. Uh, let's take this element and we will open up the 3D and materials panel. All right, here it is. Let's push this off to the side and we'll just hit inflate. Inflates this shape, right, pretty drastically we can take down that depth. So this is a pretty small element. So let's do 0, 0.5, something like that, or just play with the depth control here. Um, and maybe take down the volume of it. There we go. So I made this little pin. It is 3D, it can kind of move that around, but I wanna uh, get into materials. So for the materials, yeah, let's make this a little bit more metallic. And then we need to put this on top of it. So how do we do that? Well, with this selected, we'll go to graphics, take this and just drop it into this graphics panel. All right, adds that. We'll make sure this is still selected and then we'll click on it. And now it gets applied. We kind of rotate this around, but this is the pin, right? In 3D, uh, exactly as, uh, as we wanted it to be. For lighting, we can play with that, but let's turn on the shadows. I think the shadows are really fun. And let's just change the height. So we'll really stretch this out. 
and you're not really going to have a good um, understanding of what it will look like until you render it out. And if you get any clipping here, we can change the bounding box. This is the shadow bounds, but let's take that down. And then this is one thing like, you don't want to make sure this is always on, but when we're ready, we want to be able to render this. And it's usually just clicking this button. Then we'll turn around and render that, basically making it a ping file. There it is. Look at how gorgeous this is. Look at that. Just gorgeous. From there, we do an asset export as a ping file, adding it and exporting it using the export panel it makes that ping file. But not only did we make a ping file, we actually made a 3D file. So like I said before, you do want to turn this off you don't want to be rendering it all the time. Um, but also for this element, we can export this out as like a USDZ or USDA, OBJ. These are all sort of the uh, 3D formats. Um, so there's the say USDA export to my desktop. All right, we did it. Jump out here. See USDA right in here uh, with the base color. So you get the graphic, you get the 3D model, all that fun stuff, uh, and it's super easy to work with. So we've done all that. We've done everything, went through complexity. So scripts, global edit, mock-up, 3D, and materials. Uh, the last section, which I didn't really mentioned too much is uh, this one right here, sort of the bonus, you know, using, creating um, animation and video uh, using Illustrator. So let's take this. This is sort of the creativity segment where we have this, all of our graphics. So we could see this element, command Y. Um, some of these I rasterized and I'm going to tell you why I've rasterized them. Um, but I'm going to take this creativity Illustrator file and I do want to add some animation to it and just make it look cool. So this is kind of my segue into Express. Because with, because with Express, we can take those assets, or excuse me, that one file, here it is, drop it in here, and add animation and video and audio to our Illustrator files. So rather than just being a static graphic on social media, this just helps us do so much more. And here it is. So this graphic that I was just playing with, yeah, we can adjust the border thickness. Actually, we can give it a dashed line, something like that, and make sure this is nice and elegant like that. Now I mentioned animation. So we see all our layers off to the side. Well, I can take uh, this sort of burst element that we started with in the very beginning, and we can have it loop in and in actuality, we can make it spin and we can even slow it down. It just has a nice spin to it. Also, we're gonna have it grow into place like that. So it's gonna grow and then start spinning. We'll click this play button. We can see it grow and then start spinning. So this gets to be fun. We could do this with any element, right? We can have it animate in, drift in, rise in um, and play with this all we want. For these hands, and this is new, selecting both of them, having animation, uh, like being able to select multiple elements and have that content sort of drift in in this case. So let's take a look at it. Oops. There were two, two hands in there, uh, but there's one that's going to drift in from the bottom. Same thing for this one. We'll have this drift in also from the bottom. And then for both of these, I'll select both of them again, go into loop, and uh, bobbing, not so much, but we might have them yo-yo up and down, and we'll just have this go like really slow. So just have that move just like that, nice and easy. For the eye, that's a case where it might be sort of like uh, breathing in and out there, right? So we're able to quickly make animation 
I know I'm not doing a ton of animation, but hey, that looks pretty good. There's also added elements, so don't think that you have to jump out to uh, Illustrator and create create elements because we could drop in, say, uh, you know, a star, and we still have control over it. Um, you know, modifying it any way we want, shrinking it down, and let's not forget we're gonna have it loop. And this this case, it might blink. Pulsing is also good, but blink is what we'll do. And then we'll use shortcut keys. So I'm just holding down the option key, dragging this around to make all these different stars that should be blinking. Click play. There they all, they're all blinking. I want to adjust them. Well, I can adjust them individually. But here's my timeline. That's everything I'm making. Now, last thing I'm going to do with this file is just quickly add, anime, add a video. So we actually want some smoke. I'll add some smoke in here. Love this smoke right here. We'll drop this in and we'll fill video and we'll actually kind of push it behind everything. All right, dragging it to the bottom like that. And let's play it, change the blend mode to screen. So there we are, we have our smoke. In fact, let's adjust it a little bit so it's a little more centered. And uh, there's our cool animation. All very easy to do. Since I've done this, I've now actually made a video from an Illustrator file. I could download that and uh, use that wherever. But that's next level content with Illustrator. And honestly, that's a lot of Illustrator content. So uh, if we take a second, jump back in here to all this content and everything that we've done. Everything from creation, which took a lot of time, color and type, complexity, all those new features, including the bonus content with Express. I hope you enjoyed this. I went over a lot. Uh, we made a lot of graphics. And um, you can find all these Illustrator tips on this link. So that being said, that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching.